Uh, today we are going to begin uh, our fifth module, where we would be talking about the facets of human adjustment and basically our focus would be on avoidance, withdrawal and compromise, how these three uh, techniques are used uh, for a better adjustment. If you remember, uh, while we were looking at the task oriented reaction patterns, uh, okay, uh, there uh, we did talk about different types of uh, possibilities that uh, uh, we do have with us which helps us adjust and we had deliberately left out avoidance, compromise and withdrawal which said that we will talk about it at length. Uh, the reason behind this primarily is the fact that uh, the fact that you avoid something, the fact that you uh, have uh, a tendency to withdraw from certain type of situations or compromise in certain type of situations, they are all learning dependent. Okay. These are all learned behavior and therefore, if you look at it from the viewpoint of uh, what has been learned and how essential it is uh, for individuals to learn those skills, you realize that if one has learned to avoid the injurious situations, this means one has developed competence for survival. Okay. There is no point okay, uh, repeatedly colliding with injurious situations in life and therefore, Avoidance in that light is perfectly a uh, normal reaction that human beings can come forward with. If you are able to anticipate certain thing and therefore, you avoid beforehand, <coughs> this could be one way of coping, this could be one way of handling the situation that you did not confront it directly, because you were very good at anticipation. You predicted that this will certainly uh, know follow the situation whatever is right now. And therefore, before it could occur, you succeeded avoiding it. Okay. But largely, the very fact that we avoid certain things, it is not that we have avoided it only once, but you would realize that there are certain type of individuals, there are certain type of situations that we tend to avoid. <coughs> this means, avoidance is primarily targeted towards specific individuals or a specific circumstances. Similarly, you tend to withdraw, but withdrawal could be again with respect to or in front of certain type of individuals in certain types of situations. Okay. This means that the fact that you have experienced your life okay, with all uh, the possible outcomes that you saw, you have now learned what should be avoided and where you should be withdrawn. Okay. And hence, these are all uh, learning dependent behavior manifestations. How many of you have uh, know undergone 151, the introductory psychology course? Oh, very few. So, it is a repetition for you all, but because many of you have not undergone this course. Therefore, I would quickly uh, know uh, come to the major theories of learning because avoidance, compromise and withdrawal, they have to do with the learning. In psychology, the major theories that talks about learning are basically the conditioning theories okay, and the cognitive theory. Now, conditioning theories basically say that there are two formats of uh, getting conditioned. One, what is called as classical conditioning and the other is called instrumental conditioning. Okay. Classical conditioning basically is uh, know, a process where you involuntarily get conditioned, okay. whereas in instrumental conditioning there is a voluntary participation of the individual. Okay. So, you voluntarily participate in the act and then gradually you get conditioned. As human beings, we <coughs> learn know both through classical as well as through instrumental conditioning. The best example of classical conditioning would be uh, that when uh, as human beings, when we see pickles, we have watering of the mouth. You have experienced it? This is classical conditioning, no? 
unless and until the pickle should have touched your tongue, your mouth, your mouth should not have started excreting extra amount of saliva that should not have happened. But because the visual of uh, the pickle itself can trigger the physiological mechanism attached to it therefore, the visual of a pickle starts you know making more and more saliva come to your mouth and hence you have the watering of the mouth. Okay. Uh, interestingly enough I will just uh, know go little into it not at the uh, at length and hence in case you are interested reading uh, know on stuff on uh, conditioning theories or cognitive uh, learning then you should uh, read a proper introductory psychology book. <coughs> when uh, Pavlov uh, the man who came forward with this theory of classical conditioning when he was working uh, know on uh, uh, in a lab set up on the dog what he realized was uh, that the meat powder used to be presented to the dog okay, and at the same time a bell used to ring and finally the dog started initially the dog salivated for the meat powder not for the sound of the bell, but because these two were too contiguous no, very close to each other therefore, the dog could involuntarily associate that the presentation of the meat powder has to do with the sound of the bell. So, there was an anticipatory response. So, the moment the bell used to ring the dog used to salivate. Okay. Exactly in our case uh, you see pickles in the jar and you have watering of the mouth this is classical conditioning. Instrumental conditioning are uh, you know, those set of uh, reactions where you are made to participate in an act okay. and because of your active participation your behavior gets conditioned. Uh, the initial uh, experimental proof of this was uh, you know, uh, given by uh, again a lab study where the cat was put into a box. Okay. The cat was in a box, uh, the cat had to you know was supposed to press a lever to come out of the cage okay, and a fish happened to be lying outside the cage. So, the cat would you know experience the pangs of hunger inside the cage will make random movements because uh, of uh, the fish lying outside the cage okay. and then it was realized that uh, know, uh, during the random movement the cat would accidentally press the lever which makes the door open the cat used to come out have the fish the experimenter once again used to put the cat back to the cage with uh, know, certain uh, reputations the cat learned. So, it will just sleep uh, nicely in the cage whenever feels hungry would walk to the lever press it come out have the fish. Okay. Uh, the best experimental demonstration of uh, instrumental conditioning was uh, by B. F. Skinner uh, who basically had uh, you know, uh, uh, conditioned the pigeons and again the exercise was the same that you have a box the pigeon was put into it okay. and there was a small colored dice there which had the electrode attached to it and the beak of the upper beak of the pigeon also had the that electrode. Okay. So, the pigeon was supposed to pick and it was supposed to pick right at uh, that point okay. then only <coughs> the food pallet used to come out. Now, this pigeon out of uh, no utter disgust in the cage no food to have uh, it would pick keep picking, picking till it uh, know pecks the right point and the moment the pigeon used to peck at the right point okay, a food pallet would come out and this was a reward that the pigeon was getting. In the initial case fish was the reward that the cat was getting. Now, <coughs> when you make the cat or the pigeon behave the way you want them to behave giving an award this is a voluntary participation of the animal and the animal gets conditioned and this conditioning is instrumental conditioning. Okay. There could be uh, no this was of course, the reward based type of uh, training technique there could be punishment based, based treatment techniques no, where you are supposed to follow a pattern and if you do not follow that you are punished for the activity. Okay. Similar type of experiments were conducted usually on rats. Okay 
and uh, when certain uh, pathways were made in the cage, the rats were supposed to move on uh, the pathways and the moment you deviate, okay, uh, you would experience a mild electric shock. Because of the mild electric shock, the animal would always tend to remember which grits now had electric shocks and therefore, it would start moving on the desired pathway at the experimenter headset. This is a experimental demonstration of instrumental conditioning. Okay. Uh, these experiments were you know, conducted on uh, human beings later okay, to prove that uh, how human beings can also be conditioned. <coughs> that was the first phase of it. Later on, uh, it was even demonstrated that if you have been conditioned, there is also a possibility of deconditioning you. So, you are made liberated out of your conditioned behavior. Both these things were demonstrated in the lab. What happens with respect to our tendency to avoid, withdraw or compromise in certain situations in life depends on how we have been conditioned. Okay, study we had taken that example, okay, where you somewhere you know, try to punish yourself or try to you know, compensate for the unethical method that you have adopted for earning something and hence you take a chunk out of it and you donate it. Okay. And every time you donate you realize that this time for this an unethical thing that I had performed, okay, a part of the earning out of that unethical practice has been devoted for a better cause, a cause which is better according to you. Okay. So, our entire you know, tendency of avoidance, withdrawal and compromise would be guided by such type of conditioned reaction, what we have learned. Also, there is something called cognitive learning. Okay. Cognitive learning basically you know, represents a case, where you have your own ability to take into cognizance, what you had earlier experienced, there, this is called metacognition. Okay taking cognizance of your own cognitive performance is metacognition. So, we have our experiences and the capability to metacognize, this means that one situation I had one experience, second similar type of situation I had one experience, in the third situation I would be able to look back and reflect at these two experiences and think of what could be the outcome in the third situation and accordingly I would decide how to respond to it. Okay. So, many of our uh, know, behavior that we manifest are guided by our past experiences of similar situations okay. and therefore, you realize that the behavior that we show in those type of situation be starts becoming constant. This is what we were talking in the beginning that we choose finally, in our life, who are the people we should avoid, okay, what are the situations we should avoid and therefore, it becomes more of a generalized type of a response for a set of individuals or a set of situations. Similarly, for withdrawal, uh, withdrawal tendency, similarly for compromise situations. We have uh, talked about the formation of the stimulus response bond, no? that in for a certain stimulus, you will have certain type of response and you realize. Okay, uh, that uh, this type of uh, you know, behavior is required in this type of a situation. Best examples you can take, remember your childhood days, no? uh, you go to your school and this is your first day in your school, you do not know that uh, when a teacher enters the class, you have to stand up and then uh, in a very rhyming fashion, you have to say good morning ma'am. You sit there, you still do not know why people are carrying bags and why each bag has a lunch box and why even though I am carrying a lunch box, I cannot have it right now. Okay. Many of the you know, uh, things of the orderly world is not known to a child who has come to the school for the first day, okay. looks at a teacher entering the room and then you know, a couple of children who are older in the school, in the class they will stand up they will say you know good morning ma'am, the ma'am will respond back okay. and the ma'am and the teachers will look at you, oh you did not stand, you did not uh, wish uh, good morning to your ma'am and then you realize, okay. so whenever a teacher enters the room, this is how it has to be done and little later you realize, 
after progressing in uh, for few more classes you realize that you do not have to sing you just have to say good morning sir good morning ma'am. So, that rhyming presentation is gone okay. and then comes a time when you realize that you do not even have to stand okay. and then you have cultural differences no uh, culture like here where uh, know you are supposed to come um, so take your uh, seats and then stay here in the class for time uh, for the full time. Uh, here also you would have differences no many uh, institutions where you have a dress code also. So, you have to put a particular uniform to come to the class okay. and in more liberated institution like ours you can even come in a Bermuda in a short in a Hawaii chapel it is all your prerogative no? you choose uh, how uh, bad to groom yourself or how good to groom yourself. Okay. And then you could have uh, you know in a uh, few of the institutions not in our country outside where uh, you one can uh, take the liberty of smoking in the class for example, you can come with a bottle of coke for example, in the class in our condition these would be considered to be violation of the code of conduct. Okay. And uh, now just move to the eastern side a little more on the eastern side and you realize you know that everybody you know has uh, their notebooks open or their books open they turn the page at the same time they will go down at the same time. So, there is a, you know, a whole lot of difference you know, uh, in terms of how you behave in the class, but then it has to do with how you have been mentored okay. what type of experiences you had the day when you did not stand in the class the day when you did not wish the day when you wished in the class the day when you stood in the class. Okay, and accordingly we keep on keep on changing the same person who used to stand and sing good morning ma'am just after 3 4 years okay, stands but says good morning ma'am. Okay. Now, you avoid one type of a behavior okay, or one pattern in the same set of behavior. Okay. So, likewise you will find little little bit of <coughs> no tints of avoidance, withdrawal, or compromise everywhere. You don't feel standing, uh, no, um, uh, in queues for long, long time. Many schools, their morning assemblies are uh, quite long. Even the school where I was, no, 50 minute long assembly, and it's a pain for many, no, that you have to stand, uh, no, erect for 50 minutes. So right from uh, prayer to, uh, no news of the day to news highlights of the day thought for the day Hindi recitation, English recitation, Sanskrit recitation. So, you will have a whole lot of uh, things that has to be done every day ritualistically and the assembly would end with the national anthem. I do not know how many of you also had similar experiences no? and then you would find a beautiful pattern. Uh, what I experienced was that the more younger you are the more you enjoy assembly participation and the more uh, older in the sense that more you are towards class 8, 9, 10 the more deviant you tend to become. Okay. So, the queue for class 9th and 10th you know they will be standing in the queue those in the front will be you know very erect those at the back will take the liberty of singing something else while uh, some other song is going on okay. or uh, no will instead of closing the eyes will know keep on looking here and there. Okay or uh, no even laughing in between and then nobody says no who laughed and therefore, the whole class gets punishment all types of activities. No? You tend uh, know, to compromise with the situation because you know that this is the way 9th and 10th students uh, behave and therefore, even though I might not approve of that set of behavior I still become a part of it compromise with the situation, but these are all intellectual uh, know, uh, capability of yours which makes you decide that fine the situation requires you to avoid it, the situation requires you to withdraw from it, the situation requires you to compromise in this given situation, because you want to still retain the level of adjustment that you have been able to. In novel situations in our life one would always look at the past experiences, the earlier experiences and then try to understand that what would be the appropriate response in this set of situation no? and accordingly you judge and 
the more and more uh, know varied experience you have the better could be the judgment and better the judgment is uh, the more appropriate your behavior is the more appropriate behavior you come forward with the more accepted you are the more accepted you are the more adjusted you are okay now uh, avoidance withdrawal and compromise they are all behavior manifestation which are all know very very closely linked to our learning process how you have been trained study you remember when we were talking about undoing okay we did say that uh, your it is the early childhood experience which will make you realize that asking for an excuse asking for pardon do you really value it or not when you say sorry to somebody many people know take it as if saying sorry is an insult to me many people will take pride you know that how you know polite i am and how humble i am that i don't hesitate in uh, you know begging sorry because i was the one who committed this error but i all that would depend on how you have been groomed remember the study we were talking with respect to undoing <coughs> similarly what to avoid what to compromise you know with what to where to withdraw from this would also be dependent on what you have learned okay uh, the tendency to avoid certain type of food the tendency to avoid certain type of people the tendency to avoid uh, certain type of locality okay you have been uh, you know told what to eat and what not to and you develop a taste which might be completely you know opposite to what somebody else in some other part of the world has developed okay say like uh, if you are uh, given a raw fish to eat okay you would consider that how unhuman treatment this is no? because fish is a delicious item okay for those who are non vegetarians okay but then there is a way of cooking it no and unless and until you cook it it is not edible whereas you go to the eastern part of the world okay uh the more is from india and then you realized you know that in the forest even raw fishes are delicious okay so the whole set of sushi sashimi is in japan for example no you take raw fishes and you enjoy oh very delicious okay for us it's pain to have it because we have not developed a taste in that way okay uh similarly you know uh, it is basically again the tendency to avoid the same food which is not prepared in your way you are conditioned to having food in a particular way similarly you know selection of spices for example okay the raw material for the ingredients for cooking and stuff so right from there to how you groom to what you speak selection of words selection of friends selection of enemies okay all those are based on our learning experience how we have uh, learned things and what all we have learned now avoidance of dangerous situation is something that is uh, supposed to be biologically wired in us okay uh, we won't go into the details of it but uh, if you read uh, the books on evolutionary psychology you will find you know that uh, the those there are sound arguments you know which will tell you that why human beings are always scared of certain type of animals okay uh true basically speaking the reptiles okay human race by default is very very scared of reptiles okay and evolutionary psychologists they argue <coughs> that for the survival of the species okay uh, the mammals had had a very tough time with the reptiles uh, recollect the, the earlier days of the dinosaurs and uh, all those uh, big birds those uh, hefty creatures Uh, which were carnivorous men have also happened to struggle with them for their survival so the toughest struggle that uh, human beings is, uh, had with the reptiles <coughs> that phase is over okay human beings got superiority over the reptiles in the process of evolution but the whole uh, fact that you uh, know we had a very close and tough battle with the reptiles still remains in our uh, mind and therefore the biological brain always makes you respond uh, with a fearful uh, you know type of an outcome when you encounter a reptile but irrespective of reptile which is which is supposed to be biologically wired in you for rest of the things you realize 
uh, that it is gradually your own past experience that tells you whether you should avoid this situation or not. And largely it is the situation where you predict that there is a danger to your survival. Now, if you are able to anticipate then you uh, avoid the situation, but here avoidance is used more like a coping module. Okay. You have to cope with the situation and you have used avoidance as a coping technique. Anticipation of ultimate negative outcome is likely to lead to avoidance of the situation. No? So, if you are able to anticipate that the final outcome is going to be negatively loaded in the situation. Okay. We all are uh, know, concerned about your own uh, ego structure and therefore, we would not want the negative outcomes to reach us. So, if you are able to predict the negativity in the outcome of the situation, then you decide it finds better for me to <coughs> quit right now, I would avoid this situation. Again if you look at uh, know the behavior pattern in psychology, we talk about two types of behavior broadly speaking, the overt and the covert behavior. Okay. Now, overt behavior are basically those manifested behavior which you show, okay. behavior outcome that is visible to others is called overt behavior. I am standing right now, I am talking to you, I am adopting certain gestures and posture, all these are overt forms of behavior. Then comes the other type of behavior what is called as the covert behavior, covert behavior is basically the latent behavior which is not visible to others. Okay. So, say for example, what I think right now, what I feel right now, if it is not shown to others, if others are not able to judge it, okay, this would again be considered as behavior in psychology, but they are considered as covert behavior. Withdrawal and compromise, you would realize that it can be either overt or it can be you know even covert in nature. If you uh, know perceive in a moment that there is a threat, the overt tendency is to avoid. So, there is a threatful situation and you overtly tend to avoid it. So, say for example, uh, know somebody uh, suddenly tells you uh, that uh, know uh, just be aware uh, there was a big anaconda in this room sometime back. Okay. And the moment you hear of uh, this news, okay, you perceive a threat and therefore, you decide that it is better to avoid. If you are uh, know here in the class, okay, you see for opportunity that can we go out of it, those who would be outside and about to enter would decide not to enter. This is an overt response in a threatful situation, the moment you perceive threat it is better to avoid it. Okay. So, uh, say for example, it could be of a very small nature which you usually do not uh, comprehend that way, like say uh, there could be three routes of reaching your hall and one route has intense traffic jam. Okay. You decide to overtly avoid that route and follow the other route which will lead you conveniently reach your hall. You have avoided one route, this is an overt avoidance. Okay. But if uh, you realize that uh, no, uh, there is a dangerous situation, then there could be a tendency to withdraw from it. Now, you remember threat in a given situation would be that there is an immediate threat. Okay. A danger in the situation it might happen, it might not happen. Uh, <coughs> examples like when we used to have uh, no repeated bomb blasts in this country, okay, uh, just uh, before certain festive seasons no, in certain market places. No. Many, many places in India had such type of bomb blast, serial bomb blast would take place no, and you know that the, this is just one day or two day before the festival and therefore, large number of people will go to the market to procure certain things uh, for the celebration of the festival and deliberately in uh, market which high density of individuals, there would be some explosions. I know of people in certain cities uh, know, who would deliberately avoid going to the market on those days. You simply withdraw, I do not want to go there. Okay. So, if there is an option of online booking for stuff, I will do that, I will you know, prefer to retain inside my house, 
because withdrawal is the best tendency there is a danger there is a danger but then whether uh, i would be a prey or not i don't know whether it would happen this time or not i don't know whether it will happen in my market or not i don't know okay so the danger means would be situations where there is uh, embedded danger in the perception but then most of it remains undefined whereas in the case of the threat there is a defined threat okay and hence in the first case you realize that there is a tendency to avoid it in the other case you realize that there could be a tendency to withdraw from the situation okay sometime back i was uh, know in an area where um, mostly the regional movies would be screened you know uh, the language that i did not know and there was only one theater where uh, the hindi movies uh, would be screened okay and uh, there used to be several times there happened to be you know uh, bomb blasts uh, either in the parking area or uh, ticket booking area inside the theater okay so when i uh, was there i never ever for those many years never ever went to the theater to watch a movie okay today when i am talking to you i realize that this is also withdrawal okay there is a danger and there is no ambiguity in uh, the occurrence of the phenomena but you perceive uh, the danger and therefore you decide that it's better to remain withdrawn do not actively part actively participate in this type of an environment now uh, some other subtle means of uh, coping also might include you know avoidance in fact uh, little later we will come to stress coping and resilience and there we would be talking about uh, coping at length and you would realize that there is something called avoidance coping okay where the tendency to avoid something okay could be used as a strategy of uh, for coping in a given situation but that is unlike withdrawal and compromise withdrawal and compromises are not used as coping technique rather they would be strategies to encounter the adversity that you are experiencing right now but there could be certain situations no like you can have symptoms such as amnesia amnesia is forgetfulness okay or some other format of uh, neurotic or psychotic symptoms okay in certain type of neurotic or psychotic uh, disorders uh, you have tendency to forget certain things okay now certain degree of forgetfulness towards the situation or uh, you become amnesic for a longer duration okay you remain without memory for a longer duration or you could revert to uh, regressions or you could you know, revert to fantasy where you gratify Uh, the unfulfilled things uh, in uh, imaginary forms okay now uh, there is something called uh, motivated forgetting okay motivated forgetting is a situation where uh, you show a desperate tendency to deliberately erase something out of your conscious awareness okay say for example you had a, a very illustrious academic career okay minus one course where you failed once you got f okay and you had to redo it okay now when you recollect your academic performance okay you remember everything except the f i they say there was a course i did not do well but um, i think it's 10 12 15 20 years old so i don't remember the grade the truth is that uh, no that's a painful uh, memory for you and therefore you are you show a desperate tendency to deliberately erase it that is motivated forgetting okay amnesia would be that uh, no the <coughs> experience itself is you no know, too 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 traumatic to be recollected and hence till you realize that you are capable of you are desensitized enough to recollect it uh, you show that you say that uh, you show certain degree of numbness you state that uh, there something was there but i don't clearly remember it now uh, the example that we discussed no that uh, during the kargil war when after uh, winning a particular uh, position uh, one of the brave commanders no lost his head he was beheaded out of the bombshell 
and the fellow journalist there no he did did always show as if he was not able to recollect for some time it was after a certain period when he could you know restate what actually had happened there what he saw there <coughs> but what you realize in these things either it is uh, you know uh, means of coping whether it is some form of a neurotic behavior some form of a psychotic symptom whether it is uh, you know some degree of uh, forgetfulness whether it is amnesia whether it is regression whether it is fantasy means you are coming to the borderline area now but still the core in all these format is withdrawal and avoidance okay now fear or anger inducing situations they tend to elicit movement either towards or away from them okay this means that if you are angry you tend usually to fight this is the usual tendency but you could be intelligent enough to realize that i am still a timid person in front of the source of anger and hence i cannot go and retaliate and therefore you might decide to move away from your source of anger okay now uh, moving away in such type of situations is usually guided by the simple overt withdrawal or avoidance tendency you know that you know that if you are if you don't withdraw in this situation then you are going to be experiencing more heat of the situation something that you do not want to experience now uh, in terms of our internal experiences the emotional experiences we always talk of <coughs> three things in uh, emotion reaction we will talk about two of them one is the directionality in the emotion and second is the valency in the emotion valency of the emotion would mean that uh, positive emotion negative emotion this is valency of the emotion okay for example happiness is a positive uh, emotion sadness on the other hand is the negative emotion surprise is a positive emotion okay disgust is a negative emotion anger is a negative emotion okay so one way of looking at your emotional experience is that you have either a positive uh, emotion or you have a negative emotion but the other uh, interesting thing uh, in terms of emotional uh, reactions is the directionality component and directionality means either your emotional experience makes you move towards the source of emotion or it makes you repel the source of emotion say for example uh, happiness valency wise it is a positive emotion directionality wise it will be a approach emotion no so approach emotion means that i am very happy because you did something and i certainly would like to get in touch with you and to express my gratitude that how happy i am that you have done this favor to me okay so this valency makes you approach the individual you are extremely disgusted that this has happened to you and you say that i don't even want to see the face of this man there is a great degree of repulsion here okay in terms of directionality you are trying to avoid me okay avoidance once again comes here in the form of behavior okay but now it is colored with emotions usually it is uh, the anger which always makes you approach okay compared to other emotions negative emotions which will help you largely you know uh, repel uh, yourself away from the scenario but then there could be uh, interesting compromises that human beings show i might not like the situation but i have no other way but to do it you remember uh, i was sharing an experience with you that when when we were working once with uh, on uh, the ngo workers who were uh, you know working in the field after the tsunami in southern part of india okay many of them you know, they showed certain degree of dissociation okay you do not feel your attachment towards uh, you know uh, the whole um, whatever has happened all even because it is emotionally painful for you 
but then what else can you do? I am jobless, I have been given a job in an NGO and I am told that you have to do this and you go for an intelligent compromise, because you do not have an option. We will take uh, some uh, examples, some of the major events uh, in the Indian in history and we will uh, now try to look at it from, now we are not looking at individuals response, we are looking at variance in the response pattern. First we take uh, know the Sri Paramudur episode, when uh, Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated, he was the, the then Prime Minister. No? And uh, it was later on realized that uh, somebody, one of the police authority who was on duty there, okay, the moment this blast took place, the camera could catch that one ambassador car left the site, means the officer concerned ran away from the site. Okay. The, and uh, know the tape was on, so the video showed uh, know and there were several stills there, uh, which showed that there were people you know who immediately after the blast rushed at this spot. Now imagine the difference between the two set of police officers, the one okay, who perceived the threat in the situation, the danger and then decided to take away his official vehicle and leave the place. The second who did not uh, know rethink that if one blast has taken place, the other successive blast can also happen, but in turn he approaches that spot. Okay. This is the variation in the response, although you realize that you know, we talk about fight and flight in psychology, you know, that either you have a tendency to fight or all your behavior can be defined only in terms of uh, you know, these two formats, that either you tend to fight with the situation or you try to fly away. But then in same situation you realize that somebody shows the tendency to fight and somebody shows the tendency to fly away. Okay. Personality psychologist will define you know that what type of people usually show this tendency and what type of people show the other type of tendency. We are right now not going into the details of it. A second interesting example you know the 26-11 Mumbai attack, where you had a mixed feeling people who were on the site, okay, who invariably uh, demonstrated nothing but fear. And there were few others, who were sitting in uh, studios, facing camera of different news channels, participating in a panel discussion about whatever has happened and whatever is going on. And none of them showed fear, all of them showed anger situation is the same, one set of individuals who are actually involved in there. Okay. The level of involvement is such that any time they can also become a victim of it. Okay. You show fear, second set of people who realize that I am in a very comfortable cozy environment, there is no threat to me. Okay. Now that my survival is not under threat, why should I be uh, afraid? So, there is no fear, in turn I show anger this happened once, this happened twice, this has happened now, train bomb blast, x bomb blast, y bomb blast and you keep on keep on know, uh, uh, linking uh, information of the past to prove that how incapable the whole system has been, you show your anger. So, similar situation can you know invoke different types of responses, I have both in terms of the fight, uh, flight reaction, also in terms of the emotion that it induces. Now, when the individual uh, know, dominant pattern of behavior in the case of anger, okay. so if the individual you know, always in a threatful situation tends to be angry, then you are considered as an aggressive human being. Okay. But if the person you know, who shows movement which is predominantly away from the threatful situation, you might be considered to be timid or withdrawn. Now, withdrawal can often be used as a defense mechanism, no? that I am trying to withdraw from it simply because uh, this is the best defense I have. If I participate, I would not be able to control myself and if I do not control myself, something wrong might happen. Okay. So, when punishment or the threat of punishment becomes excessive, you decide 
that escape is the best defense and how would you escape you turn inward you become withdrawn okay and this works very well because it helps you reduce the tension that was generated out of you know the uh, punish actual punishment or the perceived threat of punishment that you were uh, thinking of now simple overt avoidance is the most obvious and available means of handling threats and conflicts no? so you tend to avoid you tend to withdraw now uh, there could be a possibility where you show withdrawal tendency which is very realistic okay means the situation realistically wants you to withdraw because if you do not withdraw uh, then there is a big danger to your survival this, this type of a withdrawal would be considered to be an appropriate response but if you over generalize it over generalize means if you tend to withdraw in most of the situations wherever you find little bit of danger also okay it might not be withdrawal okay in the form of adjustment rather it is a withdrawal tendency that you are reflecting which basically shows that you feel as if you are inadequate to handle this situation take examples just to uh, i think study or day before uh, there was a stampede at uh, one of the railway stations here okay and many of uh, 36 people died on in this whole process now imagine yourself in that situation that you are on a platform where a train arrives and you have thousands and thousands of people to board the train you know that the train will stop only for limited period of time and you have to make yourself enter the train and occupy a space for yourself large number of us even those who died in that process were very sure that we will go we will succeed boarding the train and we will certainly reach our destinations okay that is no uh, no that you see that there is a threat of you know, not getting a seat not being able to board the train or uh, you also perceive a danger of stampede and things like that but you decide that no nothing will happen i'll manage the other could be that you know you just see a very very massive crowd pouring in okay and then you have freezing experience i can't board the train okay you shake you shiver you perspirate you freeze i can't okay and if you are you know in situations where you perceive danger if you start showing this type of a withdrawal tendency this withdrawal is no more a withdrawal which was facilitating your uh, adjustment rather it is a withdrawal which is a reflection of incompetence inadequacy okay so till now before this we were referring to withdrawal as a mechanism of you know maintaining your level of adjustment now we have moved to the side where you know your withdrawal is no more helping you adjust rather it is making you inadequate incapable okay and if you use defensive withdrawal okay in accession then it is certainly a maladaptive form of behavior it is not at all an, an adjustment defensive withdrawal would be uh, that uh, you are asked by your wingmate that fine we are uh, no all going for a night out okay i will go to this restaurant and will enjoy like anything no this is the menu we'll explore many more if you want so join us okay and you have a defensive withdrawal you, you think i don't know how raju will interpret me how sharad will interpret me how vex how why uh, and you say ki nahi yaar i have some stomach upset okay because you realize that if i if you say that i have something to do you might not be excused but if you talk of element you might be excused this is a defensive withdrawal that you did not ex actually experience it but you are using it now if i want to deliberately avoid somebody in the group whom i don't like this could be a 
know one of my ways of handling the situation the discomfort the emotional unrest but if i am predominantly started uh, if i have started using it it is an indicator of my social anxiety it is no more an indicator of adjustment and therefore this is a reflection of mal adjustment we'll continue with this tomorrow